Hi guys, um, welcome to your modified rocket flow. So if you've practiced rocket before, you'll know what you're in for. If you haven't, no attachment to your practice, just literally go with the flow. So let's get started. So for today's practice, you may well need two blocks. So just these brick type ones here. If you don't happen to have those lying around, you can use um, two tins of beans, you could use two loo rolls. Um, it's just for um, a couple of poses a little bit later on in the practice. But don't worry if you don't have them, it's not the end of the world. But if you do, just keep them handy or maybe go and grab those now. Um, have some water nearby, sometimes this, well not sometimes, this practice is quite fast paced um, so you might find a lot of heat coming quite quickly into the body. So with that being said, just making sure that you are working with any injuries that you don't work against them. If anything hurts or doesn't feel right, please stop immediately and obviously make sure that you're safe and well to practice in the first place. So let's get started. So our rocket practice will usually start with some of Larry's pranayama, which we're going to start to do now. So I'd love you to come to a seated position, whether that's cross-legged, whether that's on the knees, on a bolster or a few blocks. However, it's comfortable for you to sit with a nice tall spine. If you feel any, any rounding in your lower back, any tension in the top of the thighs, just elevate the hips slightly. Maybe even a thick blanket is all that it needs, just so that we release that tension. And then we're going to take the hands to the knees or the thighs, palms up or down, whichever your preference may be. Then we're going to close the eyes and just take a moment to ourselves, just to check in. How am I doing today? Be honest with yourself. And then just sit with your natural breath for a moment. And I don't want you to slip straight into your yogi breath if you're used to doing that because we need to do our pranayama first. So just taking a few natural breaths in and out. Allowing the body to come into a bit of stillness to prepare for the practice ahead. And then just allow the muscles in the face to soften, the forehead to soften, and the shoulders to melt. Now rocket is usually practiced with a ujjayi breath, and you're totally up to you if you want to practice with or without the ujjayi breath. So just a quick recap if you're not sure. For anyone who hasn't practiced with a ujjayi breath before, we restrict the muscles in the back of the throat when we breathe out. And it makes a kind of Darth Vader kind of sound. Some yogis describe it as sound of the waves in the ocean. Sounds like Darth Vader if you ask me. So I'll just show you a few rounds. You're welcome to bring that breath in or not totally your choice. So you'd inhale a little bit deeper. And as you exhale, restricting the muscles, same muscles you'd restrict if you were whispering to somebody, and then exhale. I'm going to do a couple more of those for you. Inhale. Feel free to continue to inhale for a count of four and exhale for a count of four. And just use those to bring in the Ujjayi breath. If you're going to work with that, we are going to drop it again in a moment, but just so you can get used to that if you want to work with that breath. Inhaling for four and exhaling for four. Now just let go of the Ujjayi for a moment and we'll pick that up when we start the physical asana side of the practice. 
So for now, we are inhaling in through the nose for a count of four and back out through the nose for a count of four. In a moment, we'll start to add retentions and these will also be held for a count of four. Now we're going to start to add our first retention at the top of your inhalation. So your breath is now going to go like this. Inhale for one, two, three, four. Hold, four, three, two, one. Out, one, two, three, four. In, one, two, three, four, hold, four, three, two, one, out, one, two, three, four, continue on your own. Now we're going to add a retention at the bottom of the exhalation now. And I'll count you through the first few rounds and then you're going to continue on your own. So start to inhale, one, two, three, four. Hold, four, three, two, one. Out, one, two, three, four. Hold, four, three, two, one, in, one, two, three, four, hold, four, three, two, one, out, one, two, three, four, hold, four, three, two, one, in, one, two, three, four, hold, four, three, two, one, out, one, two, three, four, hold, four, three, two, one, and in again and continue at your own pace. In for four, hold, out for four, hold.
Now you are going to drop the retentions all together. You're going to return back to an inhale, exhale for four only. If you wish to sink back into your Ujjayi breath now to carry through the practice, take a moment to do that. And now as we start to move forward, we're going to get straight into the physical practice. So just slowly blinking the eyes open and making your way to Tadasana at the top of your mat. Now with the rocket, each posture is held for around five breaths, okay? Don't panic if you do three or six, it's fine. We all breathe at different rates, so each posture we go through, I'm going to hold for roughly five of my breaths, so don't worry if you've gone slightly over or slightly under with the breath. Main thing is that you are breathing, okay? And But just as a rough guide, and if you were to practice on your own, then that's what you would be doing. Now remember, this is modified rocket, so it might be slightly different to a rocket sequence that you have practiced before. Fine with me, hopefully it's fine with you. So, coming to Tadasana now. Threading the toes, feeling the weight shifting forwards and backwards, side to side. Arms rest to the side of the body with the palms facing outwards. Slight bend in the knees, or just try not to lock them if you can help it. Maybe a little lengthen of the tailbone, you'll feel your belly start to draw in. And lifting through the heart. And just taking two to three breaths here. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. So our rocket sequence starts with some sun salutation. So we're going to take it there. So let's go. Inhale, reaching up, lengthening through the side of the body, gazing up towards your thumbs. As you exhale, come into your forward fold. Take an inhale, halfway lift, making the the fat back at the back flat and bring the chest parallel to the mat. As you exhale, fold forwards. Then you're going to step or jump to your plank pose. Hold that plank for a couple of breaths, create a bit of heat quite quickly. And then on your exhalation, chaturanga, cobra or upward facing dog if that's your preference. So because it's the first one, let's just take some time here. Maybe roll in the shoulders, lifting through the chest, and then curling the toes and lifting into your first downward facing dog. So pedal the legs out, especially if they're feeling super tight through the back of the hamstrings and the calves. Now the other thing I meant to say, there's a hell of a lot of vinyasas in Rocket. So feel free to miss a few if you need. I will cue them all but it doesn't mean you need to take them all. Remember, we're still listening to our bodies, respecting those. Take the gaze forwards. Walk, step, or jump to the top of your mat once again. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Press through the feet, inhale, rise. Gazing up to the thumbs, making sure that you're gazing up and bending from your thoracic and not from your neck. Exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, halfway lift, shoulders back, heart forwards. Exhale, fold, stepping or jumping. If you're stepping, step back with alternate legs. And chaturanga, cobra or upward facing dog. Back into downward facing dog. A few more breaths in this down dog. Whether you want to keep pedaling the legs out, you are totally welcome to. If not, just hang tight. Two more breaths. And then again, gazing forwards, walking, stepping or jumping to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. And exhale, bring the hands to the heart centre. Take a moment, allow the breath to regulate. And then we're going to start to pick up the pace a little bit more. We're going to go through three more rounds of sun salutations. Feel free to crack them out on your own, at your own pace, if you would prefer to. If you're with me, inhale, reaching up. Exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, halfway lift. 
Exhale, fold, step or jump to your plank, chaturanga. Cobra or upward facing dog. Back into downward dog. Looking forward, walking, stepping, jumping, floating, flying, swimming to the top. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold, press through the feet. Inhale, rise and fold. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, hands to the mat, step or jump to plank, chaturanga. Maybe going to upward dog now if you've been with the cobra for the last few. And downward dog. Looking forward, walking, stepping or jumping. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Final round. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Hands to the mat, step or jump to plank. Take your vinyasa. And downward dog. Hold this down dog for five full breaths. One. Two. Spread the fingers nice and wide. Three. Make sure you're pressing down into the knuckles, into the fingertips and not the wrist. Four. Last breath. Take the gaze forward. Walk, step or jump to your forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, re-rise. Exhale, hands to heart. Again, pausing for a moment, letting the breath regulate, establishing that breath that you're going to take through, because we're going to pick it up a little bit more now as well. So from now is when we're going to start to hold each asana for roughly those five breaths, okay guys? You might want to step back a little bit because as you know, or you may not know, Rocket is full of everything. Standing poses, floor poses, forward folds, back bends, inversions, arm balances, you name it, it is in here. So take a moment, really establish that breath that you're going to carry with you through your practice. Are you ready? Let's go. Inhale, bend the knees, reaching the biceps by the ears into your chair pose. Lift through the heart, keep the shoulders nice and soft, gently lengthening through the tailbone. Maybe sinking a little bit deeper. On your next exhalation, you're going to bring it to half chair, flat back. So keep those biceps by the ears, chest parallel to the mat, slightly gaze ahead, it just makes the head feel less heavier. Now on your exhalation, option one, to take it to a forward fold with the hands to the mat. Option two, to bend the knees into the underarms and take your crow pose instead. So at the forward folding or crow, one, two, three, four, and five. Step or jump back to plank, chaturanga, cobra, or upward dog, back into down dog. Five breaths here. I'm not going to say five breaths in every pose, FYI. But yeah, thank God for that, it's annoying me already. So do your best to bring the breath back, to stay in control of the breath. Breath is priority. Now, we're going to inhale, lift the right leg. Exhale, step the right foot forward, left heel grounds. Inhale, warrior one, virudrasana one. Lifting through the heart, shoulders are soft, bending into that front knee. Make sure the left glute is switched on, especially if this knee is dipping a little bit. I like my hands parallel here. Feel free to bring the palms together, gaze to the thumb if that is your preference. Last breath. Then you're going to open out the arms into your warrior two, gazing along your front middle finger. Sinking a bit deeper, hugging the inner thighs in towards one another. Shoulder blades draw back and the heart lifts. And you sink a little deeper, try not to collapse into that left inner arch. And then we're going to straighten the right leg, 
reach forward and exhale, bring the right hand down to the big toe, the ankle or a block, and the left arm is going to open into your Trikonasana Triangles pose. Gazing towards your left thumb, heart wide open, plugging down through both feet. On your next exhalation, bring the left hand down to the mat. You can bring it to the inside of the right foot or to the outside. Peel that right arm open, twisted Trikonasana, five breaths. So if your left knee is hating you, feel free to unplug the left heel and modify your posture where you need to. You guys know your body better than anybody. Now from here, we're going to come to our extended side angle. Inhale, reaching up. Bend back into the right knee. Forearm to the thigh or elbow. Inhale, reach that left arm up and over. Some people like to go under and up. That's totally fine. Roll the left shoulder back. Lift the gaze towards your fingertips. Three more. So remember, you're just lightly resting on the, on the thigh. You are not collapsing into that shoulder. Bring the left hand down. Option to lift the left heel if you need to. Open the right hand into your twist. And then from here, we're going to take the right hand down, frame the foot, lift the left heel. Now from here, you are going to push back to downward facing dog. From downward dog to dolphin, bringing the forearms down simultaneously. If you would rather come into pincher here, you are welcome to. If you are happy here, stay in dolphin. If you're not quite ready for pincher, but you don't want to be in dolphin, just walk the feet in, lift the leg, drop, lift the other. And walk back again into your dolphin. Last breath. Press back into the palms, forearms lift. Now, two options here. Option one, to take your floating splits. Option two, a deep lizard lunge. So option one, lift the right leg. Step the right foot out to the outside edge of the right hand. Sorry, I realised I said option one and that wasn't option one. Now you can stay here, keep the left thigh lifting towards the ceiling, heart forward and up, and you're going to hold here. Option two, lift the right leg forwards to plank, then you're going to bring your right knee to the back of the triceps, bend the elbows, left elbow into the side of the body, let the left leg float, possibly extending that right leg out as well. Three, two, one, jump back. Chaturanga, Cobra, or up dog, back into down dog. Five full breaths. Push through the top of the thighs. Think about lengthening through the spine over, getting the heels down towards the mat. And then we need to do that again on the other side. So when you're ready, inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, warrior one. You know the drill, you know how many breaths now. Keep the shoulders soft, face soft. Keep the breath in check, she says, as she's panting all over the show. And just roll this right shoulder forwards ever so slightly. Don't worry too much about the hip. Keep the outside of the right foot pressing down. Exhale, warrior two. So just making sure shoulders are stacking nicely over the hips. They're not too far forward or too far back. Sink in a little bit deeper. Hug the inner thighs in. Watch the collapse of that right arch. And then we're going to take it to your Trikonasana. Take the bend out of the left knee. Draw the hip back as you reach forward as far as you can. Exhale, left hand down. Right arm opens to the sky. Lift through the heart. Press the back of the head back ever so slightly. And ready to twist, right hand down, inside or outside of that left foot. Left arm peels back along with the gaze to the left thumb. 
Watch the collapse of that inner right arch. You can micro bend the left knee if you need to. I'd much rather you did that than locked the joints here. And then we're going to go for our extended side angle. Inhale, cartwheel the arms up. Bend back into that left knee, forearm to the thigh or elbow, reaching that right arm up and over. So that is just only my preference. You might sit down this way. Neither of them are wrong. It's whatever works best for your body. Lift through the heart, no collapsing into that left shoulder. Ready to twist it. Right hand down. Left arm opens with the option to unplug the right heel here. Last breath. Sweep the left hand down to the mat. Downward facing dog. Option. Pinch up. Dolphin. Just as before. I'm going to stay in dolphin, but you're welcome to lift the legs into your forearm balance. Get ready to push back to down dog. So don't worry if when you press up that one forearm comes up at a time. That's quite normal in the beginning. Now inhale, lift the left leg. Option, floating splits on the left or deep lizard lunge. I'm going for the lunge this time, but it's not to say you can't take the standing split, uh, the flying splits. I just want you to have a different demo, that's all. So I'm going to set the left foot to the outside of the left hand. If you're flying, you fly. Hearts forward and up in the lunges. Now, if you feel this knee is really dipping, just drop it down instead. But if you can maintain the lift, press through the top of the thigh and you'll be all good in the hood. Flying splits, last couple of breaths. One and two. Step the left leg back to plank, chaturanga, cobra or upward facing dog. Back into down dog, five breaths. Gazing forwards, walking, stepping, floating or jumping to the top of your mat. Inhale, rising all the way up. Press through the feet, lengthen through the side of the body. Exhale, fold, taking the peace fingers to the big toes, bending at the elbows, also bending at the knees to get the chest to the thighs and the back nice and long. So rather than this, do this instead. You'll still feel the feel through the back of the legs, even if it doesn't look as impressive. Two more breaths. One. And two. Release the toes. Inhale, lifting up. Make it count. Lengthen through the side of the body. Create space wherever possible. Exhale, forward fold. This time, pop in the palms underneath the balls of your feet. Shifting the weight forward towards the toes here, shoulders drawing them away from the jawline. Last breath. Release the hands. Now, inhale, lift up. As we lift up, we're going to take our twinkle toes. So push the palms away from the crown of the head like you're holding the ceiling up. And then we're going to lift onto the tippy toes. Five. Four. Three. Sweep those forearms in. And one, lower the heels down, bring the hands to the heart centre. If you need a moment, pause here, let the breath regulate. It does get a little bit caught away with us, the breath during rocket, but it does me anyway. You might be at home thinking, mum, mum, that breath is on point, you worry about yours, lady. So, hands back to the heart, take the right leg, step it to the back of your mat, turn your left toes in. So we're going to come into some wide leg forward folds now. Now depending on your anatomy, depending on your body type, depends on how you will fold. 
So feet for me needs to be parallel. Some of you might prefer to have the toes turned in slightly. If you're feeling pinching around the top of the hips, take them more parallel instead. Now, when we fold forward, we want to fold from these hip creases. We don't want to fold from the middle of the back. The back should stay flat. So I'm going to show you a demonstration this way and then side on as well so you can see the angle of the legs. So the first one, hug the thighs in. Press evenly through the feet. Hands to the waist, elbows draw in. Inhale, lift through the heart. As you exhale, keep the elbows squeezing towards one another as you come into your wide forward fold. Five, four, three, Keep those elbows drawing in, and one. Inhale, lift up, keep those inner thighs working. Nice, now you're gonna pause here, I'm just gonna turn so you can see the alignment from a different angle. Now when we fold forward, try and keep your hips in line with your heels, rather than throwing the bottom back, because it's easier, but you won't feel as, not, um, as much engagement through the back of the legs. So for this one, taking the hands behind the back, roll the shoulders, lift through the heart, Exhale, keep the back nice and flat as you fold forwards as far as is comfortable for your body. Five, four, three, two, and one. Inhale, lift up with control. Keeping that wide stance, keeping the inside of the thighs engaged, keeping the weight nice and even through the feet. Now bring the hands back to the waist. Inhale, lift in from the heart. Exhale, fold forwards. This time when we fold, we're going to release the hands and you're going to take the hands to the big toe. Bend at the elbows. Let the crown of the head hover, be nice and long in the neck. Last breath, hands to the waist, inhale, lift up. So we're going to go for one more fold. However, if you would rather take a headstand here, if it's in your practice, you're welcome to. If it isn't yet, just come with me. So we're going to bring the hands back to the waist, but we are going to drop them. Lift through the heart, exhale, fold forwards. And I'm going to release the hands to the mat. So hands to the mat here, taking the head to the mat. Let me get my words out. <laughs> Bring the crown of the head or the top of the head to the mat if you want to go in for your headstand. If you're staying with me, walk the fingers around and walk the hands underneath the legs, pressing down into the palms. So if you're in your inversion, you don't have too long. Another three breaths. So one, two, and three, turn the hands, walk them back around. Now you're gonna bring your hands, to, no, you're not gonna bring your hands to your waist. Now we're gonna just um, take some splits here. So bring the hands to the waist and lift up. This is where you would need your blocks potentially, okay? So have them handy. So the first thing is to turn the toes out. This is where usually if we was in class, everyone turns to look at me to see me demonstrate the wonderful splits. Nah, -uh, not my hips, never gonna happen. Yours might be built a little bit differently. So if you're with me, of course, you can take it as wide as is comfortable. If not, you'll take the, hat, the sit bones, the hips, all the way down to the mat. This is all I've got, I'm afraid, and I'm gonna just honor it and respect that. Five, Four, amazing if you're deeper, I'm sure you are, it doesn't take much. Two, and one. Now this is where the blocks come in. You're gonna walk your hands around to your right foot. You're gonna lift your left heel. Option to now bring the hips down into the mat. If you're like me and body says nah, -uh. <laughs> We're going to bring the left knee down, okay? And then you're going to stack your shoulders over your hips, and this is in any variation of your splits, okay? 
What we sometimes see is we lean forward over this leg, but we're just putting a lot of weight into the front hip and not a lot in the back. So try and keep it nice and neutral and the blocks are just there for you to press into. My arms clearly are not going to meet the floor. Yours might, who knows? So if you're in the splits, amazing. Send me a picture so I can be jealous. And then we're going to walk the hands around to the front leg and take either your splits or if you want to come down onto that knee and push the left heel away from you. Hips, shoulders stacked. Watch the jaw, especially if you find a lot of tension in your hips. You don't want to be crunching down. Your last breath. And then we are going to walk, release your blocks. You might need them for a moment, so don't throw them away too far. Turn back to centre. And then you're going to very gracefully park your bottom on the floor, she said, very gracefully. So this is the part where everyone's like, oh, I've got a minute. But we're going to check your banders. If you've practised with me before, you've definitely, definitely practised with your banders. If not, I'm going to talk you through them. So... Banders, what are they? What is this she talks about? Banders are internal locks. They contain energy, well, they keep the energy that we cultivate in our practice contained. And also, things like arm balances such as crow, uh, headstand, you'll want to activate your Uddiyana Banda and your Mula Banda. So, your Mula Banda is your pelvic floor, okay? It sounds so much nicer. I'm going to activate my Mula Banda now. <laughs> so, just draw it in and out. You can do it a couple of times. The only thing we're going to teach banders is if you're in a posture, I can say, that's right. I can't see internally, <laughs> believe it or not. So it's down to you to feel this difference. Your second banda is your Uddiyana Banda, and that is your navel lock. So your navel draws the spine. So you might hear that in class, and the teacher might say, pull the navel into the spine. And what they're essentially asking you to do is activate your Uddiyana Banda, your navel lock, okay? And it just gives you a bit more of a lift in a lot of your asanas. So we're going to play with those now. So the first thing we are going to do is let it all go. Be all loosey-goosey. Loosey in the Mula Banda. <laughs> loosey in the Uddiyana Banda. And then you're going to take your hands either side of one of your thighs. doesn't matter which one. Let it all go, okay? Hand inside of the thighs. I'm going to lean forward and see if you can lift the butt. Keep it soft. But then see if you can lift the left leg or the leg that you have the hands around. Nope. Nope. Feels like it's stuck on the floor. Try the other side. It might work. Who knows? Give it a go. Nope. I mean, I can lift it, but can't maintain it. So let it all go. Let it all go. Now, warning. <laughs> you may experience cramp in a moment, okay? That's just an indication that maybe you need to draw in a little bit more on your banders, but don't worry if you're new to banders. You'll be like, what? What is this she's talking about? Feel free to message me and I can explain to you a lot further if you need me to. Or obviously Google. <laughs> Google's always, not always good actually. That's, that's a bad idea. Maybe don't. Uh, some good sites though. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. Get back to the rocket. So now we're going to activate banders. So we're going to do the exact same motion, but we're going to draw in on Mula Banda, pelvic floor, draw in on Uddiyana Banda, navel lock, okay? And then you're going to see what happens. So leaning forward, engage, engage, lift. Then all of a sudden, you might find there's a little bit more lift and you can hold it. Let me lift my hand now with all that activation. And let it go. You've got cramps. Shake it out, do what you need to do, and then move to the other side. Hands either side, banders on, lean forward, lift. Maybe who knows, you might better lift both legs. Three, two, and one. Drop in the hips, bringing the legs around. Now, we can't really, I, can, I can't do this one, but you might, so I'm not going to take it out. So, we're going to take the hands just behind your hips, all right? I think you know what's coming. We're going to lift the booty. We're going to shift it back, and then you are going to activate those banders. No, not for me today. And see if you can lift your heels. I'm going to give you five breaths to see if you can do it. One, 
So squeeze in, squeeze in. That could do that at the beginning of the lockdown or after we're really disheartened now, never mind. It is what it is. <laughs> Two. And one. Now dropping the legs, you're gonna hug the knees into the chest, rock forward, hands to the mat, jump back to plank, hello back in the flow. Exhale, chaturanga, cobra or upward facing dog, back into downward facing dog. Walking forwards, walking, hopping, running, or jumping to your forward fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, bring the hands to the heart centre. I'm going to turn just so it's better for you guys. You can stay facing the top of your mat. Now I'm going to hug your right knee in. Pause for a moment and then just let that right hip drop so it's nice and neutral again. Now, you can stay with the knee. If you want to take the hand to the big toe, you can, okay? I'm just going to take another two breaths here. And whether you have the knee or the big toe, you're going to then take the leg out to the side. Take the left arm out along with the gaze. If your standing leg looks like this, bend the knee instead, okay? Doesn't mean you crap at yoga, I promise. Just means your anatomy is a little bit different to some others, that's all. And then we're going to come back to centre. Pausing, three, two, one, release. Hug the left knee in. So you're either here or here first. Last breath, then open that hip out. Either extended hand to big toe or extended hand to knee. Take the right arm out along with the gaze. Three, two, and one. Come back to centre, pause again. So you might have the leg long or bent. Don't worry whichever one you're comfortable with. And then dropping that left foot back to the mat. So then you're going to step your left leg to back towards the centre of your mat. So roughly about two and a half feet between your front foot and your back foot. I'm rubbish with them measurements. I, I don't know if that's actually two and a half feet. So anyway, you're going to bring your left hip forward, right hip back. You're going to press down for your left heel. We're going to take pyramid pose. So I like to bring the hands behind the back. You can take reverse prayer if you wish. Inhale, lift in through the heart. Exhale, fold to a flat back first. Now, if that's enough engagement through the back of your right leg, stay here. And then if you can keep the back flat, you're welcome to then draw the chest towards the thigh a little deeper. Keep that left heel down. Inhale, lifting up. You can either step your left foot forward, right um, foot back, or you can swivel on the heels of the feet and face the back of the mat, just like magic. Roll the left hip back, right hip forward, lift it through the heart, exhale, fold. Last breath. Inhale, come up with control. Either step to the top of the mat. If you swivel, swivel and step to the top of the mat. Release the arms. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, folding forwards. Inhale, flat back, hands to mat. Step or jump to your plank. Chaturanga. Cobra or upward facing dog. Back into downward dog. Looking ahead, walking, stepping or jumping to your forward fold. Now from here, you're going to inhale, come up. I'm going to take side crow. So with the hands to the heart, as you exhale, you're going to bend the knees and come down into a toe stand. Feel free to stay here if you don't want to take side crow. You can also take it to a twisted toe stand if you still want, don't want to go as deep as crow. Then we're going to bring the left elbow to the outside of the right thigh. Find a nice deep twist. Option two to stay here. Option three, I'm going to place the hands to the side of the body around shoulder distance apart. 
Then you're going to bend the elbows. We're resting the right thigh and the back of that left elbow, left arm. Squeeze the knees and the ankles together. Bend the elbows. Hello, side crow. Three, two, one. Slowly coming back up. Releasing. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, flat back. Hands to the mat, step or jump back, chaturanga, cobra or upward facing dog, back into down dog, looking ahead, walking, stepping or jumping to your forward fold, inhale, rise, same option, different side, exhale into your toe stand, I'm going to stick with this um, twisted toe stand here, but you're welcome to take row again on this side, just wanted to give you again another option. So as you press the palms together, you can rotate the spine a little bit more. Side crows, make sure you're breathing. And last breath. Release the crow, release the twist. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, folding forwards. Vinyasa, halfway lift. Hands to mat, stepping or jumping to the back of your mat. Chaturanga, cobra or upward facing dog. Back into downward facing dog. Five breaths here. If you want to take a cheeky little child's pose, take it as a child's pose instead. And then you can jump to seated, or you can just bring the knees down, swing the legs around. Don't let this <laughs> lull you into a full sense of security. So now we're going to take the right leg out in front of us. You're going to bring your left foot to the inside of your right thigh, option one. You can turn around. Or you are going to bend the left knee and bring the left ankle to the outside of your left hip. You then might need to roll the right butt cheek out of the way. So either foot is on the inside of the thigh or the outside of the left hip, okay? So option one is to stay here. Option two, finding that big toe of the right leg and lifting. Take in the opposite hand if you wish and bringing your chest towards your thigh. Keep the heart lifting. Three more breaths. Three, two, and one, slowly lower this leg. Now, if you want to vinyasa between sides, please do. So you'll need to unpretzel your leg, cross the ankles, rock forward, hands to mat, chaturanga, through your flow, down dog, and back to seated. But we're gonna take it to the other side now. So left leg is long. Right foot to the inside of the thigh. I'll demo this one for you. But if you did foot to the outside of the ankle, then do that again here. Then you're going to take the hand to the big toe, lift in the leg. Pull the shoulders back, heart lifts. And release. Cross the ankles, bring the knees in, rock forward, hands to mat, you've guessed it. Work through your flow. Down dog, back to the knees, back to seated. We're going to take eight angle pose now. So, eight angle pose. God, knackered, we're not, even, we're not even there yet. So, but good knackered, I like it. So, I need some talking as well. If you could just follow me, that'd be great. No, I'm joking. So eight angle poses and arm balance, okay? And it is quite a tricky one, so don't feel disheartened if you can't crack it yet, okay? Always add yet to when you say things like, I can't do that, I can't do that yet, okay? So we'll start with the right side. I'm gonna bend this right knee, and I'm gonna bring this right knee on the back of the thigh towards the back of my triceps. Okay, I'm going to take the right hand to the mat and I'm going to pinch my tricep bicep with my calf and the back of my thigh. All good? Right, then left hand to the mat. 
So it's slightly to the side of the hip and in front. Then you're going to cross the ankles over. Now, as you inhale, you're going to lift the bum. And as you exhale, you're going to press the feet away from you. And you're going to squeeze the top of your right arm with inside of both thighs. So, inhale, let's lift. So if you're here, just floating, you can't take it any further, winning at life today. Stay there. You want to go further, start to squeeze those thighs in, dropping the chest. Four, three, two, and one. Have a little melt out, swing the legs around, take it straight to the other side. Don't worry about the vinyasa this time. So back of the left thigh to the back of the left arm. Hooking around, squeezing the arm with the inside of the knee. Ankles cross over. Inhale, lift. Exhale, squeeze. Drop the chest. I didn't think I was going to make it then. Five, four, three, two, one. And melt. Cross the knees in. Cross the ankles, knees in. Rock forward, hands to mat. Jump back to the plank. Chaturanga, cobra or upward facing dog, and down dog. Do you know what? Do you want a little child's pose? Okay, knees wide, toes together, and drop the hips to the heels. Take a breath in, sigh through the mouth. You're doing amazing. <sighs> Not for too long, because technically there is no child's pose in our rocket sequence. So we've done some arm balances, some inversions, some folds. And now we're going to start to take it into the back a little bit. So from here, back into your downward facing dog. Forwards to plank, chaturanga all the way down onto the tummy and the chest. We're going to take three rounds of Shalabhasana. If you need to pause between them, please do. We're going to crack them out one after the other. So it's going to be a total of about 15 breaths. So let's go. We've got this. We're going to start with the arms to the side. This is my favourite. I feel like I'm in dirty dancing and Patrick Swayze is lifting me over that river. So when your weather works for you, all right? When you're ready, inhale, lift the chest and the thighs. Five, four, Three, two, and one. Leave the hands behind, squeeze the shoulder blades, keep lifted. Five, four, three, two, one. Reach the arms out. Final five, four, three, two. <laughs> And one, collapse, let the forehead rest on the back of the hands. Release the thighs and the glutes. Let's take a moment. Guess what's coming next? I think you've guessed it, vinyasa. Hands underneath the shoulders, push up to plank. Chaturanga, cobra or upward dog. Back into downward dog. Now from here, you are going to option one, walk the feet in, take a fold. Option two, take the one leg up for a few breaths and take standing splits. Option three, to bend into the right knee and you can do some bunny hops off of that mat. Or you can lift into full handstand if you would prefer to. But these are just as awesome and they'll get you there eventually. Change legs if you're going for the standing splits. Bring both feet to the mat, inhale, rise. Exhale, fold forwards. Halfway lift, hands to the mat, step or jump to plank, chaturanga. Cobra or upward dog and down dog. Gazing forwards, walking, stepping or jumping to your forward fold or tucking the knees in and crow. Three, two, one. You can release, 
come to your fold and then jump back. You don't have to jump back from crow, okay? Chaturanga, cobra or upward dog. Take a child's pose. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now the next pose we're gonna to come to <clears throat> is bow pose. Now if bow is too much for anybody's back, we did three variations of Shalabhasana a moment ago. Arms to the side, you know, a dancing variation, arms behind or in front. Take one of those variations instead if this isn't for you. If you're with me, all the way onto the tummy. Then we're gonna bend the knees. We're gonna find the feet or the ankles. <clears throat> As you inhale, just like Shadabhasana, lift the chest and the thighs, but you're going to push your feet into your hands as well to open through the chest. When you're ready, inhale, lift. Five full breaths. Now, once you've done your five breaths, you can stay here. And I'm not joking. If not, you're going to rock. If you can, and rock to one side and open through the shoulder. This is literally my favourite thing to watch in class, so don't take yourself too seriously. And then you've got to roll back. No, nope, I'm making it, yes. And make it to the other side. A couple more breaths. And back to center then release go on take a child's pose because i'm nice like that and just release that lower back i'll bring the knees in together for that one how's the breath going is it still serving you well and then we're going to start to lift up onto the knees we're going to take camel's pose now. So camel is quite a deep back bend. It aligns all of your chakras at once. And it is a lovely pose, but not everybody loves it, okay? So that's fine. We can't please everybody all of the time, can we? So with camel, we need to make sure your hip crease is in line with your knees, okay? If you take the knees wider, you can back bend, but what you'll tend to do is you'll hinge into one part of your back rather than bending your back as a whole, if that makes sense. So when we bend, I want you to think about lifting and lengthening your spine just as much as you are back bending, okay? Let the length come before the bend. So the first variation, hands just gonna to come to the lower back and you can stay here, all right? Don't need to take it any further. As you inhale, lift through the heart. As you exhale, keep the hips pressing forward as you start to take the head back. So you can stay here, okay guys? If you wanna go a bit further, then you're going to bring your hands down to your heels. You have two options. You can curl the toes under, which will give you a bit more room, a bit closer to the, the, sorry, closer to your feet than the floor then. Or you can let the feet go flat, but just be mindful this doesn't happen. Okay, so if you start to then lean back, then you're going to keep the hips pressing forward, lifting through the heart, lifting through the chest, and squeezing the glutes to help protect your spine. Another three breaths. One, two, and three. Bring the chin to the chest, slowly come out, and just sit back on the heels. If you want to go into a full child's pose, you're welcome to, but just do whatever you need to, to release the muscles, or release the, release the lower back, I should say. Now as we're here, we're going to swing the legs around and then we're going to come down to lay it. But again, don't get too excited. So we are going to come into wheel pose now. Wheel is quite a deep back bend. If it isn't for you, you're going to take bridge pose as well. So from here, option one is bridge. Bring the feet down, feet hip distance apart. Heels are roughly just out of reach from your fingertips. <laughs> keep the gaze straight up, pressing it into the palms. As you inhale, scooping the tailbone, lifting through the hips and the heart. 
that's option one. Option two, take the hands either side of the ears. And then you can roll up to this bridge position. And then when you're ready, you can press into the hands and lift into your wheel. Hello, deep back bend. So glutes are on to help protect the spine. Start to press the heart towards the top of the mat. If you need to come out sooner than the five breaths, feel free to. Another three with me. One, two, three. Slowly tuck the chin to the chest as you roll down. Hug the knees into the belly, cross the ankles, rock forward, hands to the mat, plank pose. Chaturanga, cobra or upward facing dog. Back into downward dog, gazing forward, walking, stepping or jumping. Option one, standing splits. Option two, you want to lift up again or do some bunny hops into your handstand again? Please do. If you're in standing splits, change legs. Foot back to the mat, halfway lift and fold. Step or jump back. Chaturanga, how's the arms doing? Back into downward dog. Gazing forward, walking, stepping or jumping to seated at the top of your mat. Nearly there but not quite. Going to take the right leg out in front of you. Left foot to the inside of the right thigh. Lift through the spine, exhale, fold chest over right thigh. So keep the back nice and flat, doesn't matter if the nose isn't touching the knee, as long as the spine is nice and tall. Now, last breath. I'm not going for this vinyasa, but you can. Inhale, lift up. If you are, cross the legs. Rock forward, jump back, chaturanga, cobra or upward dog, back into downward dog, and then left leg out, right foot to inner thigh. You might want to roll the flesh out of the bony part of that right butt cheek. Now I'm not joking. Inhale, lift, and exhale, fold over this left leg now. Five breaths. Last breath, inhale, come up. So I am going for this one. Knees in, ankles cross, rock forward. Jump it back, chaturanga. Just think of those chaturanga arms. Back into down dog. Now we're gonna take pigeon. Inhale, lift the right leg. If you've got any knee injuries, take reclined pigeon instead. Exhale, right knee somewhere behind the right wrist. Work the left leg back, lift through the heart center. So as long as you're feeling sensation around the outside of this right hip, you're all good. Now, when you're cue pigeon in class, usually the instruction will be to take your right knee somewhere behind your right wrist. Depending on your anatomy, if you take it, then you don't feel anything. You need to adjust so that you do. Some of you will need to go wider with your knees. Some of you will need to go narrower, okay? And this is where I miss real life classes. But you know your body, okay? Have confidence in yourself. You know if you're feeling sensation here or not. And then you're going to walk the hands down, maybe stay on the forearms, or maybe just rest the forehead on the back of the hands. We'll take an extra few breaths in this one, just because it's nice. Last breath. You've guessed it. You've got the option to vinyasa. Or not. <laughs> I'm not going to this time, but I'm going to give you time to if you wish. So those who are vinyasa in, start to come out, back to downward dog. Forwards to plank, chaturanga, cobra rock dog, and back into downward dog. If you're with me, curl the left toes, downward dog from here. Inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, bring the left knee towards the top of the mat, working that right hip back. Lift through the heart. You can always use a prop to prop underneath the, underneath of that left sit bone if you're feeling like you're dipping to one side. And then walk in the hands forwards into your pigeon.
So watch the jaw here, it's a jaw clencher, I find. The raspberries, whatever you need to do to relax the tension out of the face. Last couple. Now I'm going to give you the option for another inversion here, but feel free to take whichever inversion you want. We are going to come to headstand shortly, so maybe stick with a handstand or pincher. You can even go for crow if you want to again. Now from here, hands to the mat, curl the right toes under, downward dog, forward to the plank, chaturanga, cobra or upward dog. You can use your knees for your chaturangas, don't forget. Back into downward facing dog, holding here, five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to drop the forearm and go for, go, go for dolphin. You can walk the feet forward, go for handstand, or you can walk in, lift the legs. And you could do some of those bunny hops in pincher as well if you're not confident of staying up. Just do a few bunny hops, get used to lifting the foot off the ground. And once you get rid of that fear factor, then you'll just start kicking the legs up because you'll be like, yeah, I can do this. Which I totally believe you can. And the last breath, present into the palms. Downward facing dog, forwards to plank, chaturanga, cobra or upward dog, back into down dog, come into seated. So you can jump through if you want to, I'm not quite there yet. So now we're going to take Gumkasana. So you can take half or you can take full, okay? So we're going to take your left leg out first. You're going to bring your right knee and it's going to stack roughly on the top of your left, okay? Now this is half, so if you're here, you're going to start to fold the chest towards your thighs. If you want full, you're going to bring your left ankle to the outside of your right hip, so you're a bit like a shoelace. Lift through the heart and exhale, fold. Watch the jaw. Makes me get really hot really quickly in this pose. So if you see me smiling, it's just because I'm trying not to let tension in my face. It's not because I'm enjoying it, <laughs> trust me. Now after your fifth breath, you're gonna come out and take it straight to the other side. So you can lift up, uncross and recross, or you can take the hands over to one side, press into the feet, spin around, and you end up on the other side, just like that magic. If that didn't quite work, just uncross and recross. So your right leg is underneath now with the left knee on top of the right. Inhale, lift up, keep the shoulders nice and loose, and exhale, fold forward. So you might feel completely different sensation on this side than you do the other. Inhale, lift up, uncross the legs. It's so good, yes, <laughs> You don't have to remember. If you are crossing the legs, hands and mat, jump back. So if you're starting to collapse in the chest now, come to the knees, keep the integrity of the pose. Don't just try and be a hero. Your shoulders will not thank you. So chaturanga in other ways is really good to variate your practice. And I would encourage that even if you do take chaturanga without the knees, Maybe one in ten, drop to the knees, give the body a little bit more variation. Walking, stepping or jumping to seated once again to the top of your mat. Bend the knees, feet together, knees wide, Baddha Konasana. Inhale, lifting through the heart. Exhale, folding your chest towards your thighs. Now I'm going to instruct the next few vinyasas, but I am not going to take them. I've got to do arms tomorrow. <laughs> Now 
Now we're going to inhale, lift up. Option, bring the knees in, rock forward, jump back to plank, chaturanga, cobra or upward dog, and back into downward dog. Then once you're in your downward dog, jumping back to seated, back into Baddha Konasana. Feet together, knees wide. This time we're going to take forearms underneath the shins, palms are going to face up or down. You can let the forehead rest on your feet or if it doesn't quite reach, use your block or your loo roll, or maybe not the tin of beans if that's what you use because that probably hurt your forehead. And five breaths here. Really breathe those breaths into the back of the body. Although we're not finished, we are slowing down a little. So really taking charge of that breath now. Releasing your lura or your block. Inhale, lifting the arms out nice and slowly. Knees in. Rocking forwards. Jump back to plank. You know what you're doing. And you're going to come back to seated once you've finished your vinyasa. And then once you're back to seated, both legs out in front now. Now roll the fleshy parts from the bony parts so the inside of your thighs roll in. Sit nice and tall. If you find that you're sat like this, then just get one of those skinny little blocks or you can use some towels, some blankets just to elevate your hips and it will just tilt the pelvis enough so that your spine can be nice and long. You wanna maintain that straight spine as you fold, just like your standing variations. So inhale, lift. As you exhale, fold forwards. Now I need to take quite a deep bend in my knees to keep the back flat, that's absolutely fine. If you're a super duper bendy bev, in which case I can get chest to thighs without bending my knees, you might need more reach, in which case you can use your block to place at the feet so you can reach around and move a lot deeper into your fold. So always chasing that edge, taking it a little bit further, but nice and softly on at the body rather than taking it to the edge and taking the mick. Last two breaths. Guess where you're going after this? Do you know what? I'm going to do it. I feel bad for making you do it and I'm not doing it with you. Inhale, lift up. Cross the ankles, rock forward, hands to the mat, plank, chaturanga. I'm going to up dog, you can go to cobra, back into downward facing dog. Walking, stepping or jumping to seated and then you're going to come to a laying down position that's not Shavasana. So from here, we're going to take our happy baby pose. So hug the knees in and you're going to take the soles of the feet towards the ceiling. Find the big toes, outside edges of the feet or the ankles and the shins. We're going to try and keep the shoulders nice and grounded and then work the tailbone down to the mat. So you shouldn't be doing all this malarkey. You might be able to roll from side to side, but once the tailbone is lengthened and pressing down, there's not that much movement to rock up and down and you're moving into that target area right inside your hips. Shoulder soft, jaw soft. Two more breaths and then we're going for that vinyasa. One, two, lift the hips, rock forward, hands to mat, jump back to plank, chaturanga, my blocks are in the way, that was a rubbish chaturanga, and back into your downward facing dog, five breaths. One more breath, you are doing amazing. Gazing forward, walking, stepping or jumping to seated. Come back to laying down. We're going to come into our shoulder stand next. So if that's not for you, you're going to take the legs off the wall pose instead. 
shoulder standers, you've got two ways of coming in. You've got the way that you used to come in as a kid, which personally I find easier and more effective, where you literally just bring the elbows in and fling yourself up into it. If you want to come into it more of the yogi way, <laughs> then you can be really long-winded about it and you can do this. So you'll come into your bridge and then you're going to hug the elbows in, bring the hands underneath your lower back. Lift one leg and then the other. But then you can see that my hips are nowhere near stacked over my shoulders. So then we need to turn the hands and walk the hands up the body. Now this goes for everybody. Hug the elbows in as tight as you can. It will give you more room to walk the hands up the back and give you a bit of a straighter shoulder stand. If you're not bothered, don't worry too much. Get your drishti to your big toes. We'll take a little bit longer than the five breaths in here just because it's lovely. Now you're welcome to stay in shoulder stand or you can take it to halasana. Slowly start to bring one leg down followed by the other. Then you could release the back if you wanted, link the fingers and press them into the mat. The last breath and you'll lift back to your shoulder stand, vinyasa, roll down, cross the ankles, hands on the mat, chaturanga, move blocks, get out the way, back into down dog, onto the knees, now option, child's pose or headstand, I'll talk you through the two variations, if you don't need me to just ignore me, do in and you crack on in the background and do your handstands. So first variation is tripod, where we use the hands. So you're going to take your hands shoulder distance apart. Your head is going to come in front of the hands. So you're not putting your head in between the hands because otherwise you'll do a really cool roly-poly. You might even end up doing a roly-poly anyway. <laughs> so from here, you're going to bring your head down. You're not on the crown of your head, you're more on the front of your head. And then the head down, curl the toes under and walk the feet in. Then Rather than bunny hopping, you can lift one leg and let the other float up. If you find that it doesn't float like that just yet, then I want you to walk the feet in, hug the knees into the chest and make an egg. Then from your egg, you can press up into your headstand. When you're ready to come out, control it. You'll build so much strength from controlling your exits out of your headstands. And then into a child's pose. The other variation is just the same. However, most people claim that it's less pressure on their head and the majority do prefer this one. So for this, you'd bring your elbows to the mat. Take the hands to either side of the elbows and that's how wide your elbows need to go. You don't need to then take them wider. Then you'll take the hands out Link the fingers, some people prefer not to because if you roll over it can hurt your, your little phalanges, but I link my fingers. And it's the same principle, you're going to tuck the head in, this time you've got the forearms and the elbows to press into though. So then you're going to curl the toes, walk the feet in and lift, Oh, someone nearly did do a roly poly that time. And you can do that same action, same egg pose, hug the knees into the chest first and take all the time you need. So take a bit longer in your headstand. If you don't want it, just come into child's pose and take a well-deserved rest. You're nearly there, you've done amazing. Let me know how you feel tomorrow. <laughs> so now from our child's pose, if you're in your headstand, start to make your way down now. Hands up towards the body, bring the legs around. And we're going to take our 
Final posture, which is fish pose. So one more vinyasa to go. So coming down to laying. Now traditionally this posture is taken with full lotus legs. Now a majority of people cannot take full lotus naturally. They say that if you can't come into full lotus without using your hands, that maybe that posture isn't for you. It 100% is not for me. I can do half, that is it. And if it causes your knees any discomfort, then don't do, don't do it, don't do lotus. But if it is something that comes naturally to you, then of course, take that full lotus leg now and you can take your fish that way. If you're with me, palms underneath the bottom, palms are facing down. Our legs are out and we're gonna point the toes. So as you inhale, point the toes, squeeze the elbows in, press into the elbows and the forearms, lift the chest and bring the crown of the head to the mat. So option to stay here, you're really exposing that throat. So don't fear if you feel a bit vulnerable here. And if you can keep the head down, you wanna take it further, you can lift the legs as well. Five, four, three, two, one. Bring the chin to the chest. Slowly lower the head, release the hands. Final vinyasa, people, we've done it. Hug the knees in, cross the ankles, rock forward, back to play. If you need to use the knees, please do. Chaturanga, cobra or upward facing dog. Back into down dog. And then coming back to seated. Take the legs down. Come to lying down. Oh, and just let out a big, big sigh. You just did you about 976 vinyasas or something ridiculous like that. So just take the feet nice and wide. Just rock the knees from one side to the other. You can take the head in opposite directions. Notice the breathing, is it stay nice and regulated? Does it get a bit lost during certain postures? And then you're gonna take your legs out nice and wide. You're gonna roll your shoulders down away from the ears and have the arms resting to the side, palms facing up. Take an inhalation. And draw that breath in as deep as you can. Hold that breath in for a count of four and then just let it out as a huge sigh. <sighs> Do that once more, really allow the body to melt into the mat. Let the wrists be heavy, the elbows, the shoulders, the hips, the calves, and the ankles to be nice and heavy. Let the muscles in the face soften including any frowns or clenched jaws. And then again, take another slightly deeper breath in. And just let it go softly through parted lips. And then allow yourself for a few moments to rest in this well-deserved <laughs> Shavasana.
And we'll just without moving, just acknowledge the stillness inside of you. Acknowledge how you're feeling right now. And then once you've checked in with yourself, start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Take on any other movements that you feel that you need to take. And then in your own time, just bending the knees and rolling yourself over to one side. Usually it's the right, but it doesn't have to be. Take another moment to yourself and just thank yourself for showing up for you today. For taking time to move your body, to breathe deeply. And thank your body. And then you can use the hands to slowly bring you up to a seated position. Bring your hands to the heart center. Inhale, exhale. And then I'll bow forwards to bring our practice together to a close. Thank you guys for practicing this rocket series with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know how you feel tomorrow. Namaste.